All right, everybody, it's the Jerry Metcalf podcast where top real estate agents tell how they do it. Today, we are so excited because we have Friley Saucier from Naples, Florida, one, not just a top realtor, but probably one of the best networker referral generators ever in this business. And you can elaborate on that, but thank you for being on the show to share with us. Well, thank you for having me, Jerry. And that's a lovely introduction. Thank you so much for that. I'm delighted to be here with you. We've been trying to do this for a long time. And now you are here. So tell us, how did you get into the business of being a real estate agent? How'd that happen? You know, I uh, I moved to Naples 17 years ago, and I was in a whole another business before I got into real estate. I was in the retail industry for 27 years and moved down here, accepted a position and found out pretty quickly that the, the job I had signed up for was not exactly what I had in mind. And being Naples, Florida, and everybody had a license, uh, of course, I met a lot of realtors and I met a couple, one in particular that um, I ended up coaching on how to sell more houses and do things. And she worked for a developer and she was getting shopped often by the developer and uh, wasn't getting great reports. And she'd tell me about them and I'd make suggestions, you know, coach her on things to do differently so she could do it in her style, but certainly meet what but this is you in real ta- retail coaching a real right exactly but i had been coaching in the retail business for many many years so it came very natural to me to do that and i have i always want to see other people succeed and if i can help them get to where they want to go then i'm i'm all over it so at any rate um, we both were looking for new cars at the same time we both had leased vehicles and she called me one day and said, you know, I just want to drive up. I, I, want to, I want to just show you this car and get your opinion on it. And I said, great, come on over. Well, she's six foot two, former model. She steps out of a brand new, beautiful pearl white Cadillac. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. I mean, it's like a commercial. Yeah. And I looked at her and I said, what are you doing here? Go get the car. So we met a couple of nights later for dinner. I saw the car out in the parking lot with the new dealer tag. And I went in and I said, gosh, do you mind me asking how much your payments are? And she said, you know what? I've been doing so well these last few months. So just write a check for it. That was a qualified moment of my life. I said, you know what? I work really hard. I've made a lot of other money, a lot of money for a lot of other people in my career. And I think it's time I do it myself. And what I really came down to for me is I miss being one-on-one with customers. Mm-hmm. I miss that experience and that interaction. I had reached a level of management in the, my retail position that I was very far removed from customers. So I, I really sort of found my passion again and in, in just working one-on-one with people. And I love because you and I have known one another for a few years and you've always, it always, in almost every conversation that comes up in every conversation, how much you enjoy that one-on-one. With oh, her, I love it. With yeah. clients. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just tremendous. And it's like making it's like making a friend. And, you know, a lot of my clients are my friends and and become fast friends of mine. Exactly. Exactly. Very fortunate that that I have that situation. I love that. I'd love that part about our business. Um, So and we know I know a little bit of the answer to this, but what you know, you said I became a real estate agent. Well, she comes out of the car. That was your qualifying moment. I'm gonna, I want to ask you this first. So coming into the industry, as you're very savvy and experienced, a great business person. I mean, you're already advising someone who's an experienced realtor. Yeah. But coming into <laughs> coming into Naples as a realtor, what was that like, and how did you win business? How did you get yeah. your first deal? Uh, my first deals were from people that I knew. Um, you know, we were. This was back in 2003 when I got into the business and, you know, at that time people were buying anything and everything that could get their hands on in Florida. So I had contacts all over the United States that were buying um, spec properties. Wow. So that, you know, that was how I got started in the business was waiting in line to, to uh, pin, pin my people's names to the board and pick out which properties they wanted. And so I went through that real frenzy when I started and, and I did a lot of open houses. I did open houses all the time. Wow. And I, I, I tell you, that was really how I built my business was, was off of open houses. I met so many people 
And I was, what I tried to do was always give people information about mm-hmm. a community and not just say, here, let me sell, sell, sell you on this property. But exactly. it was education your, marketing. Is, yeah, let me be your concierge. And so people call. I mean, on Mondays, my phone went, rang like crazy. We were at your open house yesterday. We'd like for you to help us. So open houses is really where I built the core of my business. So you said something important in there. I think that wrapped that up into one statement is when you meet new clients, it wasn't trying to get their business. It wasn't even, you know, all this stuff about call them once a week or eight times a day or whatever. It was, let me be your concierge. Yes. And I've, that has been sort of my protocol for 15 years. Um, I, you'll find this very interesting. The first few years I was in the business, um, I did farm a community with someone else. I have not farmed a community in years. I don't do any marketing. Wow. I have do you still one- don't do it. Jim Miller is your business <laughs> coach. And he hasn't gotten you back into, and I don't know if he would, but. No, he's actually, no, no, he's not. He um, approves. That's awesome. I, I actually, I run one full page ad every year because it's in my community magazine. And if I ever give up that space, I'll never get it back in this lifetime. So I run a full page ad every single oh, year. Oh, that's genius. And what I, uh, but what I do is, you know, I've really always looked at my core business and I've stayed in touch with those people and I've built huge referrals. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I was with um, another local brokerage for about nine years before I joined Sotheby's. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it worked really well to build referrals off of my existing clients. And that's, I got a huge amount of business from doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, open houses. And then I made the move to Sotheby's because I wanted an international platform where I could apply that same business practice, that same business plan to working with agents. Well, and And so many people don't think about that ever. Oh, yeah. My agents in town locally, they're my customers. So I want everybody to know, listening to this, about your ability to develop a network with agents. You were, so we all focus on developing business through who we know. You yes. were awarded, was it with Premier, with your office, but you did more referrals? How many millions? What was, give us some numbers. I don't remember the, the exact numbers. But, but it was yeah. huge. Yeah, it was one, more than yeah, most one, people do in I a year. Top, yeah, it was the top outgoing um, and, and incoming referral agent. So, and I, I still and, hold and a Premier um, Sotheby's is how many agents? We've got over 1,100 agents. Right, right. So that's huge. But I, I think I can put it in better perspective by telling you that this year, 60% of my business is agent referral business incoming. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That doesn't include what I send outgoing. That's huge. And the referrals that you generate, the referral fees that you're generating from your outgoing, as well as the secured business from it incoming is just amazing. So tell us a little bit. So first of all, one of my questions I ask everybody, so I'm going to let you answer this because this has a lot to do with it, but also to get help us get to know you as we explore in such a competitive industry, whether it's in Naples or inter, or internationally with other agents all over the country that you get your business from, what is it that makes you stand out from the other real estate agents? Well, I think part of it is there's that, that people find me to be very approachable. Mm-hmm. They find me to be very warm, knowledgeable, and experienced. Um, you know, I believe in continuing education. I, uh, as you know, Jerry, I've gone to the uh, Harvard Law Institute program on negotiation. I mean, there's yeah. so many people that look at that and go, oh my gosh, you know, we can't believe you've been to Harvard to, to learn negotiation. I already knew how to negotiate when I got there. I proved that by being in the class and, and um, the, way, the outcome of a lot of the negotiations I worked on. But I just believe that we can always hone our skills in negotiating. You know, we change as people, as society, and we come up with, with different mindsets on things. Mm-hmm. And I think that you have to always look at... Um, you know, I always say that value is not always about the money. Value could be in the agent you're working with. Value could be in the terms you set up in a negotiation. Mm-hmm. So 
I think, you know, A, a lot of people continue to come back to me. I mean, I've got people now in 15 years, we've done a dozen transactions together or half a dozen transactions together. So, I mean, I have a very strong core group of clients like that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, now what those people would say to you is, you know, I want Friley on my side. (laughs) Exactly. Um, you know, because we've worked through things and we've worked through some tough negotiations. So I think for the people that know me and recommend me, they know all those things about me. And I think that's why people sometimes feel compelled to work with me. Exactly. Um, now, I'm not a competitive person by nature. Um, I think I was in much younger years, but I think that I can win just as much by just being myself and always doing the right thing. Well, you definitely do that. So everybody, I know Friley pretty well. And the one thing I, I said about this before we started the show, right before we started recording, but was Friley, I'm, I am excited and ambitious and I'm always just, what can I do? What can I do? Take it to the next level. And you're the same but you have this way of going, okay, this is my world. <laughs> this is my world. And this is how we're going to make it happen in my world. Right. I'm going, like, I'm going to travel when I want to travel. And, that, that, right. that, and I mean that as a compliment because your Thanks. business keeps going and you're getting, you're receiving and putting out more referrals and not just anybody at Premier Sotheby's, but probably anybody around. Yeah. And you're doing it in a way that it's not because you're struggling or killing yourself. You know, you quote hustle and work hard, but you do it on your terms. Yes, I do. Now give us some tips. I'm going kind of another direction because we've got lots of directions, but give us some, give us some advice on how you do that with such confidence without somebody like me is like, but the world might pass me by if I don't, you know, I give think us, for yeah. me, first of all, I love meeting people and I have, there's, there's two things about me. I have a very high need to please people and I have a very high need to persuade people. And I learned that through a caliper test about 15 years, well, probably, probably 16 years ago, I learned that. And I guess I've always known that about myself. So when I look at a high need to please people, you know, I like to meet people, find out what it is they're trying to accomplish. And, and try to determine if there's something I can do to help them. So when I meet people, I tend to ask them questions and listen to them talk and learn about them instead of going, oh, I'm Riley from Naples. I'm this awesome realtor. Here's 10 of my business cards. Give them out to all your people. Have Which a call is, me. And so common. Out. You know, it's just, I don't do that. I'm, I'm just more about, You know, when I go and travel and I go to conferences or training or whatever, you know, whatever it is, I'm not strategically planning who I'm going to meet when I'm there. And I know a lot of people that do that, and it's a very successful approach to take. I just believe that when I get there, I'm going to meet the people I'm supposed to meet. Well, and you make sure to fit a massage in that and enjoy it. You really do. I mean, you're someone that is a high level of success, but you fit it in. You're balanced. I mean, you balance it and you're, but I, my point in bringing that up is in that way of being, you also are attracting people to you and the people that really need you because once they show up, you actually listen to yeah. that. You take your need to persuade and please yeah. to something that's not, it could be self-destructive because you need so badly to please people and so yeah. badly to persuade them. You could be neurotic or yeah. you could create a situation <laughs> where in knowing that about yourself, you're able to attract people that actually need you and that you can guide in a way that pleases and persuades them, but to what they want. Right. And the big right. thing is what makes and you stand I, out? Listening. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I think the other thing that happens, Jerry, is when you are around people that really trust, like, and know you, which we all hear all the time, mm-hmm. but when you are around those people, they want to help you be successful. So they're going to say to an agent in their office, let me give you an example. Two years ago, there was uh, an agent in, and he's still there, John Taylor in San Francisco with Sotheby's there, had a referral of two of his very closest friends. 
And he went out into the office, or it may have been his assistant, Linda, that went out into the office and said, I need like a really terrific agent in Naples, Florida. Where am I ever going to find one? Two people in that office knew me. Wow. From going to conferences and meeting them and being introduced to them by mutual colleagues. They both said, you call Friley. This is the only phone number you need. You give her a call. Those that couple closed on a home earlier this year. They have become great friends. We have trips planned together. So this is with the client. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's just great. So I think when, you know, when people like you, they want to help you and they want to endorse you because they want to help other people. They want to say, yeah, let me help you. Let me, let me turn you into this person that can help you. Well, I think there's something important about that. that get, you've said this already, but I, I'd love for you to elaborate a little on it, is a lot of people go to a lot of networking, and whether it's G&E at Sotheby's or whatever event yeah. they go to, or whether it's an Inman event, and they kind of go after the business. And you don't do that. You go after the relationships. Totally. And when you meet kind of... And I'll give you I'll give you an example of I've been at events and I've introduced brokers to brokers and they're like, oh, good to meet you. Oh, yeah. Good for you. Like they're not listening and taking the other broker. in, so the relationship's not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell us how you do it. Well, my feeling is if you're taking time to meet someone and they're taking time to meet you, you owe them the courtesy and yourself of looking them in the eye and shaking their hand and saying, you know, I'm pleased to meet you. It's nice to meet you, you know, find out a little bit about them. I might just say, Hey, you know, where are you located? Tell me about your business, what you do. Um, you know, that's about a minute to answer that question. Exactly. And you figure out pretty quickly if you have some connection or not and how far the conversation is going to carry. I've met people like that and I talk to them the whole rest of the night. And, and, but you don't force it. Absolutely not. No, it, for me, it has to be a natural connection. And again, I don't go with a strategy of, okay, I have to sit with these five agents. So I'm going to call them ahead and schedule lunch because they're top producers. The top producers are not always the people that are going to, that are going to be my ambassadors. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're not, they may not, they may not have the time. Right. Exactly. So again, I look at it as where do I feel that there's an opportunity to have a relationship? And, you know, it could be that we never do any business together directly, but we've referred each other enough business Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, it's that six degrees of separation. So it's almost like there's, there's three degrees of, of endorsements that come when you meet someone like that. For all you know, they're going to go back to their office and tell their broker, oh my gosh, I met this most incredible person there. You know, it's the only person that actually sat and talked to me for more than five minutes. Exactly. And the broker's going to say, gosh, who is that? I want to know who that is. Exactly. So I, I think it is just truly building, building relationships and not just gathering business cards. I, if I go to a conference, if I leave with five cards of people that I really want to stay connected with and really grow a relationship, I'm ecstatic about it. I have never been wanting to come home with a bag full of cards going, look at all these cards I got, but I can't tell you anything about any of them. I I don't know who you are when you email them. You know what? I recently went to an event in uh, Montreal, Quebec, and it was phenomenal. Instead of leaving with five cards, I left with 25 cards of people that I had rich conversations with. I can tell you about the businesses. I can tell you where they're located. And I can tell you about our conversation. So, and I have to add to that, because not only did you, are you developing relationships that way, but when you engage, like you made a comment earlier, you figure out quickly whether you're going to engage or not, and you go for the engagement. But once you do... There's the saying, you are the five people you spend the most time with or who you're around influences who you become. And when you're engaging with the best of the best or you're engaging with people who you can learn from, you're learning things that most people would pay good money for and you're applying them. I mean, referral or not, you're able to apply those things to your business and grow. And the relationships, you know, I always quote Seth O'Byrne, and I'm going to quote him twice on this with Pacific Sotheby's and 
San Diego. But Seth talks about Seth talks about going with well, two things. I met Seth at an event and he spent an hour with me and I learned more from that interaction and applied it to my business in the next year and it blew my business up than I did from any wow. class I ever went to. And the other thing about Seth was is that what you're talking about is focus on relationships and go deep, not wide. Just focus on Absolutely. In fact, you know, I'll tell you something. I've always done this and I've always just done it naturally. I mean, since I was this big, I've done it. But um, you mentioned Jim Miller earlier and uh -huh. Jim Miller, um, as Jim you Jim Miller, know, managing broker in, in Chicago, Jameson yeah. Sotheby's. Yeah. yeah. Jameson Sotheby's. And I hired Jim last year as a private coach. And Jim was adamant that you have to have a CRM. You have to have a CRM. And I fought it like the plague. Right, right. You know, I'm like, here's my CRM that's right up here. I didn't go Did you really do that? Oh, hell yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh, you're all, this is great. I can't wait to hear the end of this story. So, I mean, I have, you know, I've used Outlook for a century. Um, I keep some notes in there about, you know, here, here are the names of the children and the pets, but did I log every conversation? Absolutely not. I know what I talk to people about. I love this. And these are people again, that I don't just talk to one and done. These are people that I've had relationships with for a long time. Right. Yeah. I mean, clients, I call them and just go, Hey, what's going on? I was just thinking about you. What's going on? I love you know, it. Talk about what's going on in their lives. So I did not have a CRM and I said, you know, until I find, replace and hire an assistant, there's no way I can start this. So what I've done is um, I do now have a phenomenal assistant. I won't give her name away so that no one tries to recruit her. <laughs> we'll call her, we'll call her Betsy or, you know, yeah, we'll call her Betsy. Anyway, no, Rhonda is my assistant and she's, she's phenomenal. Um, she is, she is so incredible and, we're so much alike and, and she's, um, I, I, I would say I'm pretty particular about how I do things and bless her heart. She's hung in there with me and learned every wow. bit of it. So, can, so CRM, so you got a CRM. CRM, I said, okay, we're going to do this together. And we're going to load all this in here. So I was focused on getting all the clients in and I said, okay, he recommends you focus on your top 100 clients. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, if I'm going to do that with my clients, I'm going to focus on my top 100 agents. So ah. I have, ah. <laughs> I like it. So that's you had where to spin I was, it. You couldn't do exactly what he said. No. So I put in my top 100 agents and I, so now I have a, you know, I'm creating my own algorithm of how I'm staying in touch with agents. And just for example, do I not call you every time I fly through the Atlanta airport? I Air love Force? it. And I look forward to those calls, by the way. Yeah. So I'll be and flying then I through think of you because of that. <laughs> Wait, did I say that again? I'm flying through Atlanta tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> I'm looking forward to your call. You'll get a call about two o'clock tomorrow. But, but, you know, there's just certain ways to stay in touch with some people. And I find, again, this year, my business is 60% referral business from agents. Wow. So they're really important to me. And I think they're it's important in, in talking about that because some people might go, well, that means you've got to pay referral fee every time you've got a closing. Happy to do that. Well, and you're giving, because when you're giving referrals, the way you're giving them, it's not like you've got a spreadsheet and you go find a name in a city and match them up and spit it out because that doesn't work. For any of you no, who haven't no. tried it, it, it I might get out and meet people. In fact, I'm going to tell you an interesting story. Okay. Um, when I first came to Sotheby's, I had a $100 million referral. Wow. And internationally, uh -huh. you know, I had been with the brand all of 10 weeks. So I'm being a good company girl. I go to my broker and I say, Hey, guess what? I've got some really exciting news. I have a one, it, the first referral is a hundred million dollars. There will be more coming on top of this. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you're kidding me. You're like, you're joking. I said, no, I'm very serious. This is an existing client and you know, there will be some significant business to follow this, but I don't know the people in that country. He didn't know the people in that country. 
So we went through a series of trying to find people, and we didn't have our fabulous relocation director, Alex Romine, at the time. She's awesome, so, by the way. Yeah. yeah, Alex is tremendous. So I, we were introduced to someone in that country that looked at it and said, yeah, this is not exactly what we want because they only wanted to do the Four Seasons or Ritz-Carlton residences or wow. you know, the St. Regis or something like that. And, yeah. and they basically said, you know, we're not interested, but if your client wants to come into town, we'd be happy to sit down with him for an hour and give him some tips on how to sell his properties. And wow. he basically slapped my client in the face with a wet rag. And I said, you know, the funny thing is they've been doing this for 20 years. They don't need us. They already know how to do it. Yeah. They were willing to talk to you as a courtesy to me. And because I so highly endorsed the brand. So that didn't work out. My client was wow. insulted and the referral didn't work out. Wow. I learned a very important lesson. And that lesson yeah. is don't rely on other people to help you refer your business. Mm -hmm. You need to know who the people are. You really do. You don't know them directly. You need to know somebody that knows the right person. Exactly. And know and who I to call because I do the same thing. Yeah. I am proud to say that today I have that network built up. And I can now, I've got so many agents in my phone now that if I go to do a referral, and I'll use one I sent to you as an example. Thank literally, you, by the way. Yes. Literally, I had... Um, somebody that came down and purchased a property for me here in Naples and they had been down here over about 18 months looking, which is pretty normal here because we're a resort market and people come one year and look and next year they call me up and go, okay, you're right. We should be there. So they'll come down and this couple came down from Atlanta and yes. they uh, said, we want to go back and look at the project that you showed us. We think it's absolutely perfect. And they signed a contract. And I said, in, in the sales center, sign the contract. And I looked at her and I said, what are you going to do with your house in Atlanta? And she said, well, we're going to have to sell it. And I said, well, she goes, and you know, we know a lot of agents in Atlanta. That's and we know a lot story. of these agents. And yeah. I said, well, imagine what's going to happen when you pick one of them, how the others are going to feel. And she was like, oh oh my gosh, you are so right. I said, well, I'm going to help you with that. I'm going to introduce you to Jerry Metcalf. You are going to love her. We've gotten really well acquainted in the last year. She focuses on your neighborhood. It's going to be, it, it, this is going to be perfect for you. I pulled my phone out and I said, here, I'm going to text her contact information to you right now. And I did that. And I said, may I send yours to her? And she said, oh, absolutely. So I sent you her contact information right away. You listed the house and sold it in 30 days and they're thrilled. And they're still thrilled. I love them. I, I reach out to them every other month and just check. Yeah. Like, How are you yeah. doing? But they so, are, but yeah, that was a, people. yeah. That was very nice people. Yeah. So, so it's really about, you know, you've got to be able to give credibility to the agents you're referring to, because if they think, oh, yeah, let me go into my directory and find somebody. But when I pulled out my phone and said, you know, what? oh, so sorry. That's my phone <laughs> Busy realtor. <laughs> I tell you. But I but, you know, to do yeah. that and just pull it out and go here, this is my friend, Jerry. That exactly. gave huge credibility and, and gave comfort that you were the right person. And there's so much more to it too, because when we did that, you and I were able to engage and you understood my personality. I understood yeah. yours. We could speak to one another when I met. I understood how they needed to receive the information and how to communicate yeah. with them because it's such an important part. And then during the process, you and I were at an event in DC or a mastermind in DC. We sent the <clears throat> selfie that we were loving and thinking of them, but the true, yeah. I mean, that's what, this yeah. is a relationship business. Yeah. And, and that's, that's how it works. Yeah. That's how it works. And when you do things like that, it's just the energy just keeps drawing that same energy in. It becomes this giant snowball. It I does. Mean, that's the law of attraction. And it's also going into the deeper relationships. As in having that deeper relationship, oh, sorry, y'all. Having that deeper relationship, we were able to, we were able to deepen the relationship with your client for you yeah. and when yeah. a client for me that was a true, I mean, yeah. it just was, the, it's know, exponential. 
just to take it a step further, I want to share one other thing that I do based Please. On, on referrals. So being that I'm in a resort market, most of my clients have a home, a primary residence someplace else. And I will always, after they've purchased, you know, I'll wait a little bit, a few months maybe, and while we're out having lunch or dinner or something, I'll just say, hey, when they start talking about another property, you know, and, and I'll say, oh, well, does that mean you're gonna sell something? Yeah, probably we'll sell one of the three houses in Washington, D.C. And I say, you know what, when the time comes and we find the right place here and you wanna sell one of those, I'm gonna introduce you to Jeff Wilson. He's the only person you need to know in Washington, D.C. So I've already planted his name with these people. Exactly, and made the introduction. And they're looking now to buy something larger. So I do that wherever I can, and I'm just using that as an example because that's the client that came to my mind. Well, it's I had somebody, I had a lender ask me the other day for a DC agent, and of course I sent them directly to Jeff. But when I did it, but I like I knew I was like I could speak to exactly what he's like, and the right. agent, and it, it's true when you when you send referrals that way, not only are you getting a positive experience on the one referral, but when you do it because there are a lot of agents that a lot of people ask for referrals and they find out there's no true connection, there's no relationship and the agent may not be that good, or you yeah. don't know how to set expectations for why this agent is good, Yeah, it fizzles. But in this, it's like, oh, wow, that was a good broker. Let's Next time I need yeah. somebody in another market, I'm exactly. gonna reach out to Friley or I'm gonna reach out to Jerry because that's who, that's- And they, all yeah. my clients know that I, I mean, I travel once a month. I'm gone a week, a month. From about that's what two. everybody that's what I'm talking about right I'm on the road so tell I, us but go ahead I mean, this year alone okay so I was at um, Jameson in January so I did travel during season this past year mm -hmm. I was in Miami you and I were together in Miami in fact in February I did not travel March or April I'm trying to think of where I was in May, but I'll tell you, I've been to, um, where have I been? I just got back from Montreal. I attended a meeting there. I'm going to Denver tomorrow for three days of meetings. I've got a lot of wow. private set up. Um, I'm going back to take Ninja Selling in California with Don Thomas. This and is Ninja? Ninja. Yeah, yeah I've heard I a lot about Ninja yeah, for a couple of years now. We took it last year, early in the year, in uh, Lake Tahoe with Sierra Sotheby's, and it was a dynamite class, but I was busy with season. I got back and I didn't implement it. And you know how that goes, mm -hmm. you use it or you lose it. So uh, we both decided we really wanted to re-engage in that program. And uh, I was going to California anyway, and so I added five days onto my trip. So we're going to a winery Okay, Dude. Lady, this is what I'm talking about. This woman like just lives like she you control. You're like this is and you make it happen. It's yeah, so I want to know. Yeah, this is my business. This you, is what I so you actually most people are like, oh, including a lot of times me are like, oh, you know, I have to be there. I can't leave. And then you literally like you deliver and you live on your terms. How do you a lot of it I know is your assistant, but I want a little more, more than that. How do you manage your clients when you're gone? How do you manage expectations and how do you make sure not only it's not just managing expectations, but it's delivering at the level that you deliver how, the way you deliver business yeah, and, well, and manage to be out of town a week a month. Yeah. That's pretty huge. I think one of the one of the important things to understand is when I'm booking these trips, it's done months in advance. I don't usually decide at the last minute that I'm going somewhere. That mm -hmm. might happen. I mean, Montreal was, you know, like less than two weeks notice and I did it. It was a mm -hmm. very difficult event to get into and I had an opportunity, you know, down to the wire to get into it. And I said, absolutely, I'm there. Mm -hmm. So I book these things in advance. So if I have clients coming in, especially buyers, I'll say, okay, you're planning to come in November. Well, I'm going to be gone the 7th through the 17th. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to work with you, but I'm not going to be in town those days. Most people will work around it. Most of them, not all of them. And do you lose I, the client when they don't, or do you have somebody handle it? Or um, I, 
would recommend that they use somebody else or I might refer it to an agent if they didn't come to me as a referral, I might refer them to somebody. I mean, I can certainly do a local referral and give it to somebody else and I get something out of it. But, but see, uh, everybody, you're not attached. Like so many of in this business are just so attached to every little well, bit of business. I know. I know. And I, I guess that I sort of set my benchmark too that, you know, if it doesn't hit a certain price point, it's not worth my time to stay. Right. And, and usually what, the higher the price point, not only right. the more accommodating right. the clients are more accommodating because they're specific in who they want. Exactly. And That's they're exactly. they're more understanding because it's a bigger deal to them. So they're not going by the seat of their pants to buy yeah. a multi million dollar property. They're planning yeah. it out as well. So it's a different it's it kind of works to your advantage. It's interesting. Absolutely. So you know, again, most of those things are planned in advance. Now, it's not typical that I'm gone for 10 days. I'm usually not gone for more than six or seven days. It's still a lot, but yeah, but it's impressive. Still, you know, but I, I'm not married. I don't have children. So mm -hmm. it's not that I have a family that I need to come home to or want to come home to. Hey, so my that, kids can come with me. I mean, come yeah. on. So it's a little different. We'll that, homeschool. You know, we'll get the nanny. We'll figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So my cat has a nanny. That stays with her when I'm gone. <laughs> of course she does. I mean, look at how you live. We would never expect <laughs> less for the cat. So nanny, nanny Fran comes and stays with me when I'm traveling. And um, so tell us, I want to learn a little bit about, because notice everybody we're talking, and I know you've talked about, you really, in our conversation in your business, you're really drawn to working with buyers. Is that, which is kind of the backwards model. Most agents are more yeah. focused on listings. Yeah. Is that it still is. what you? I'm um, I'm probably 80% buyers and 20% sellers. Most of my listings come from referrals or repeat clients. I don't farm for listings. And you sound done. like you're really happy about that. Well, I, I am, you know, I love the thrill of the hunt for a buyer. There's something about that that's really exciting for me. And again, I think it's it's just, I I love the thrill of the hunt. I, I it's, it, you know, it's like if you, if you have a cat and they're an outdoor cat, you know, they'll go out and bring presents home to you. Are so you it's like helping. Cat? No. <laughs> I just don't see you that way, Polly. <laughs> no, I'm clearly an indoor cat. <laughs> I have, people, I have cats on the outside to do that kind of right, stuff. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm clearly an indoor cat. Sleep in the bed. Yes. You're actually more like a princess, just just for the record. Who has well, an that, indoor cat? Who's that was also my a princess. favorite story. Was the princess right. in the? But we won't elaborate on that. Um, I like I like finer things. Yes, and I which I love that about you. I'm not a snob about it. No, you're not. But I enjoy those you things. You just know who you are. And there's something yeah, to be for that. I know who I am. And those are things that I like and enjoy. And so I think the lesson here is like whoever you are, be who you are. Because yeah, you can't absolutely. have what you really want until you are right. who you really yeah, are. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think if, if we could all just be who we are, we could all live much more much more harmoniously. Exactly. And that's, t I got that out of Tim Grover's book, Relentless. I just say all this to make sure everybody knows. And I'm like, Isaac, tag it. Anyway, <laughs> Isaac's like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So speaking of books, can I talk about books? Yeah. Well, you're supposed to wait to the end, but give us a book. Cause I have a feeling it has to do with what we're talking about now. So give us a book. Well, I want to, I want to introduce you to three books. Please give us the books. Here's the first one. Got it, Isaac. Oh, creative visualization. Creative visualization. This book was written back in the 70s. Wait, let's it was... read it one more time because I want to read the subtitle for everybody who's not watching and they're listening okay. on the show. Put creative. It back. Wait, will you put it back up though? I want to read it. So everybody, it's creative visualization and the subtitle is use the power of your imagination to create what you want in your life. And who's the author? Shakti Gwain. Shakti Gwain. Awesome. Okay, so tell us about this book. So this was gifted to me in my 20s. So I've been reading this book for about three years. Now, it's been a little longer than that. Three. I thought you were 29. So you've been reading that book for about nine years. Anyway, 
Um, it really is a book about how to visualize things that you want to come into your life. And I knew as a child, I did this and I didn't realize what I was doing until I read this book. Wow. You learn all about how to set your mind to uh, practice the law of attraction. Wow. Healing yourself, writing affirmations, getting what it is you want in your life. And it can be um, a relationship. It can be a car. It can be a home. It can be whatever it is you want. This, if you practice the guiding principles in this book, you'll, you can have whatever you want in your life. It's all right. Isaac, it's would phenomenal. You make sure that we order that on Amazon. Seriously. I love that creative phenomenal. visualization phenomenal book and we're tagging it for everybody and hashtagging okay. it and all that good stuff and linking it so i'm gonna save my other book i've got three okay so this is the other book that's the journal <laughs> it's a journal but let me tell you what kind of journal this is this year i took a trip i went to miraval see i'm starting to remember the other trips i've taken this summer i went to wow. miraval which is a spiritual spa place out in um oh, the I remember this. outside yeah. of tucson arizona so it's miraval miraval m-i-r-a-v-a-l and it is an amazing amazing place it's a very spiritual place they have a phenomenal spa there you get on property you don't want to leave and go anywhere were you sad to come home you're not you're not um, you're not allowed to use phones, computers, or anything on property except in your room, wow. and one very small dedicated outdoor area. So it's a very peaceful place, and it's a great place to go and re rejuvenate and just get yourself back to center. So um, Jim Miller said to me, he said, "I want you to do something on this trip. I want you to journal it." I wrote down all of my experiences that I had while I was there. Wow. Every, every session I went to, everything I did from my ceremony with a shaman to oh. so. listening to psychologists speak, physicians speak, astrologers in here. So it's really, this has become a really fun read for me because I can go back and read part of this and it puts me right back in that place. That's so I encourage everybody, when you're going on a really great vacation, find a book you like and journal your trip. Write down the fun things that you're doing. Write down those memories that you don't ever want to forget because you can open your book and read them and it'll take you right back there. So that's my second second read for you i love it and do you journal life or just do you journal trips or what do you do with that i um i have journaled for years i have not been journaling recently but i just bought myself a new journal and i'm going to start journaling again and what do you I, do that? so what do you find in just what do you find the differences when you are and aren't journaling in your life what is the difference in the outcomes the big, of your day i think the big difference is when i'm journaling i'm more focused Mm -hmm. And I put my direction on paper and it's like writing an affirmation. So I can tell you, I started writing uh, journals in grade school and I wrote them up until the time I was in my early twenties. And when I realized that everything I wrote in my journal, no matter what it was happened, wow. it was like, it was startling. And I realized that it was almost like, Oh my God, is this bad? You know, I'm creating these things and you know, what if something bad happens? And it's not that I ever wrote anything that was ill will towards anyone. Yeah. That certainly sort of wasn't the case. But, but it was it really, just so magical. It startled me. So a few few years later, I got this book and I understood what I was doing. I was doing this from the time I was in grade school. Creative visualization. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What is the third so, book? So oh, the ahead. third book, you know what my third book is. I do, but I'm going to wait. The go -giver. The I talk about the go-giver and you a lot on this show, by the way. I've had some people tell me that, as a matter of fact. So this is my go-giver book. And I'm going to show you my go-giver book is 
oh my gosh, it's laced with tabs here, this way and this way. I've got them turned in right now because I was using the book for, for something. But um, I received this as a gift last year mm-hmm. when I went to Ninja Selling. And I read the book. I don't think I read the book until I got home and it sat around for a couple of weeks. And I picked it up and read it. And I went, oh my God, what an incredible book. It really talks about how to give and not give money, Mm -hmm. not give material things, but how to give yourself Mm -hmm. to help other people. And it's just, I've read the book three times. You know, I've gone to conferences and I've spoken to this book and I just really believe in it. It's it's a message really about how to think about how you can give to other people. Give and again, some examples I, because you've used well, that obviously in how you've developed your whole business. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really like for me in real estate, a really easy thing that we can do for each other is, you know, if I know that there is someone in Texas that's looking for an agent in Atlanta, I'm going to say you need to call Jerry Metcalf. Mm-hmm. And I don't want anything from that. I don't want to dip into that referral. But you, but you will, because I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> but no, I wouldn't accept it. That's how I am. I wouldn't accept it because you're the ones doing the work. I'm simply making an introduction. Right. So I think that's a way you can give to someone. You know, you can give your time to teach someone something. Mm-hmm. Just like that Seth spent an hour with you and you learned things in that hour that made your business just explode. You know, that's giving. Mm-hmm. It's giving without expecting anything. It wasn't a thing he gave you. It wasn't a check that he gave you. He it didn't was give actually you so much more. Yeah. yeah he, gave you, he taught you how to fish instead of giving you the fish. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that there's a lot of ways that we can, you know, just help each other. And I think it really comes down to what can you do to give value to someone? Unsolicited value. Uh, unsolicited. I like that. The, you know, the yeah. question, yeah, what is, because sometimes it's not the answers, it's in the questions. What What can you do yeah. to I'm give gonna make people unsolicited I'm gonna make value? So a good friend of mine of many, many years just joined your company. She was not a Sotheby's agent, but she's joined. And I don't know if the announcement's been made, but so I'm not going to say a name. Okay. But in short order this week, you will get an email. The two of you will get an email from me introducing the two of you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I don't expect anything from that, but I just think you two should know each other. You're in the same company. Well, and it's funny Both because. Terrific agents. I mean, why wouldn't I want you to know each other? Well, even you, you put in, you know, you're always putting referrals together for other people. But yeah, got, I do a lot of like, that. I just know, you know, who, who belongs to who and how they, why they need, and you're just putting them together and you're not counting how that comes back to you, but like it or not, it does. Um, yeah. Which I, you, but, and I, I do think I always say in the go giver, you, I need to reread it and find it, but there was a lesson I got in that book about, and I reread it somewhere the other day, and I don't remember where it was, but in giving, you've also got to be willing to receive. Very good. And if and everybody you know, wasn't willing to receive, how could you give? Like, it's just as well, much a gift. Just, that's just it. And the way I put it is because most people that read the book don't get that out of it. They just go, oh, that was oh, the I biggest don't. lesson. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. It was a big lesson for me, too, because I'm like, receive? Hmm. And I think it was the second time I read the book that I went, I get it. Yeah. Because if you give and you're not willing to receive, then you're not letting that other person have the pleasure of giving. Exactly. Exactly. So, and it's kind of the flow of how, I mean, you kind of put, you kind of put, what is the word? Like, flow of the universe. Yeah. It's just a natural flow. Of, it's like of, an energy block when you're not willing to receive or you don't. And there's so much the world has to offer us when we just right. open it up. Like Fabian Fredrickson is a big business coach and she talks about your biggest opportunities are always right under your nose. Yeah. She's made a big difference in my life, but you know, they're always right underneath your nose, but you've got to be willing to open your eyes and receive them. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So this has been awesome. Usually I ask the book towards the end, but now we've gotten towards the end through all this awesome conversation. 
what I'm looking at these questions just to make sure I haven't missed one I really want to ask you. I would say that one more, and then I, well, we're probably going to do like three more to bring us to a good close, but one of them would be, what is your biggest aha, or what has been your biggest aha or biggest lesson about being a real estate agent in our business? I think, gosh. I may rephrase it, and usually I make this a separate question. Yeah, why don't you, why don't you ask that a little bit? What do you wish you knew when you got into this business oh, yeah. <laughs> that you know now? What do you wish you knew then that you know now? I wish I knew when I got into the business that my agents were my customers. I wish I had realized that early on in my career. It me too. Me it took me a while to get there. And agents, once I said, I was like, you know, I want people to want to work with me. Mm -hmm. So all of the agents in town, I don't see them as competitors. I see them as my customers. Well, you come into this business and I even, I was at an event the other day and somebody said to me, yeah, you know, your business is just so cutthroat and it's so tough. I said, well, if that's what you make it, it will be. Yeah, exactly. But it's not, you know, what you focus on gets bigger. It's, 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 I, you know, I love real estate agents so much because you have to be such a giving, open-minded, see the world kind of through a different lens in this business, the really top agents do. And, and it really, it's exactly, it's exactly to that. But um, Latif Hayson said this, a lot of people said it, but Latif really said it in an interview on the show. She's in Napa, but she said, you know, Jerry, and somebody else on the show said, a lot of people said, it, but it's so important and it's only the top agents or people who've been in the business a long time that really see it, but they say clients come and go. And that's not to mean clients aren't, we wouldn't have our business without our clients, yeah. but we forget realtors never go away. The good that's ones right. stay. That's and it's exactly those relationships right. that we harness that brings more value to our clients. Absolutely. When we and see when, that. I think that's the other thing is that my clients see that I work very well with other agents and mm -hmm. that gives them comfort and puts them at ease. Exactly. No one, no one likes to see a confrontational situation. No one likes to be in a controversial relationship. So I think when your customers see that you're easy to be with. And agents trust you and, and then you can get so much more done. And yeah, also, absolutely. you know, it's like a little family. Like when you're a real estate agent, you've been doing it for a yeah. long time. You know every agent like you know a sibling. And you know what to expect and they know what to expect. And when you learn to love one another and you learn what they're about, it's just, it, it, it gets to be so much fun. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And it really, when we understand one another and love one another, we can just get so much more for everybody um, in that way. And when you read Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference, you can really get along with that. Yeah, yeah. You know how I feel about that book. I know, that's your, that's your go-giver book. I mean, that is my go-giver. That Never Split the Difference has changed my life. It really has. So what is your favorite? And this is funny because you misses, this question is funny for you because you wouldn't even do a CRM. You're like, CRM? But what is your favorite tool, whether it's a CRM, an app, not your cell phone, and not this, even though this is like the first most important, um, but what is your favorite that you found important in supporting your business or most powerful? And if it's your CRM, which, in which CRM do you use? I'm asking two questions at once actually is what I use. That's me too. Yeah. So I like it because I think it's a pretty simple program. It mm -hmm. doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles and that's all I wanted. Exactly. And you can put a lot of bells and bells. I'm putting yeah. bells and whistles on mine now. You can go yeah. either way with it. Um, yeah. But what it, what has been the most important tool or the most valuable tool for your business? I think this may sound really corny, but I think it's the best tool for me is listening. That is a good one. That's the best thing that I can do because I can listen. I mean, I have an uncanny ability to listen to someone over the phone in one conversation and I could, they could fly down here tomorrow and I can show them the property they'll end up buying. Wow happens to me all the time. Wow. And, and I think if you just listen to what people want, 
you can save them a lot of time and a lot of heartache in this in buying or selling a home but you need to listen and understand what it is they want so while that sounds like a great thing to finish with i have to elaborate or i have to get you to elaborate because there's a famous saying and a lot of real estate agents listening to this are thinking it yeah but buyers are liars yeah well i think buyers just don't understand sometimes and i'm going to give you an example of that so madison column with um one Sotheby's mm -hmm. in West Palm Beach, Florida, sent me a referral. I don't know, it's been four or five years ago. He mm -hmm. sent me a referral. And the client said, okay, our budget's a million five. Rather be at a million, but it's a million five. And I want something that's got high ceilings. I want something that's you know new. I want this, I want that, but I'm not spending over a million five. And I said, okay, so how about I show you the closest thing I can find to what you want for a million five? Perfect. We set the date. They flew in. I took him to the first three properties. He goes, this is not at all what I want. And I said, well, I'm glad you realize you can't get what you want for a million five. Good response. So may I now take you to what it is you want? He said, absolutely. He ended up spending $5 million. Now, is that what you took him to? Yes. Wow. Um, I actually took him to a $6 million condo and he missed it. He thought about it too long. He had uh, a study done on the, the building because it was new construction and he waited too long and somebody else got that property. So there was another property that came online and there was going to be a penthouse, a very special and unique penthouse in it. I was in the developer's office at least once a week. Mm -hmm. to get that property for him and he's got it it's stunning it was just featured on the cover of uh, home and design magazine 10 page spread it's beautiful i hope they mentioned you so when <clears throat> excuse me so i think when people say buyers are liars i think sometimes buyers don't understand and it makes them look like they're lying exactly I think that there are some people out there that are just game players, whether they're buyers or sellers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think if we're astute and pay attention to how our businesses operate, mm -hmm. we can select these people pretty quickly. And they usually self-select out for me. Exactly. Especially the more experience you get, the more you, it's, yeah, you don't, I don't even... I won't spend time. Yeah, I will not spend time with game players. I now, just I'm going to ask you because I know everybody else. The buyer that you took, and I've had that. I had a, I had a client say, I want a million-dollar property. And he was like, this is a million-dollar property? And then he said, but this is what I want. And I said, well, that's close to $3 million. He was, oh, well, show it to me. Well, he saw it. He, saw, he bought the first one he looked at. But I'd figured out what he wanted by then. So we gave him, yeah. we were like, look, this is, this is a million dollars. But this is what this is what you said you want. This is three million dollars. Oh, okay. Now in that situation, I actually didn't know, but it evolved that he could do that. But did you know, or did it yours evolve, or? I didn't know. I just said, with your permission, I'd like to take you to what Perfect. it is you do want. Perfect. Yeah. Like I said. See, and that's he where. Adamant that he was not spending more than a million five, and I will always respect somebody's price point. But you so gracefully, uh, yeah, you so gracefully handled that because I think a lot of agents in that situation would have thrown their hands up and been frustrated, and there could have been a confrontational situation. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah. And then he would have gone and moved on and bought a five million dollar property with another agent, and you would have been yeah. bitter, or the agent would have been bitter because that is not an uncommon story in our right. business, right? So that's a it's great way, example. I can't get what I want here. I can't get what I want. So I just said, you know, could, may I show you what it is that you do want? Mm. And they're great friends now too, by the way, I haven't dinner with them in two weeks. <laughs> so. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I bet you've already said it, but I'm still going to ask my last question. What is the, if there's one thing, unless you've got like five more things to add, all right, what is the, I'm just making sure, what is the one thing that you hope that the listeners of our conversation or this interview get out of this? I'm, if there's I'm anything. I'm sorry, Mary, you broke up. Our oh. connection broke up a oh, little sorry. bit. If there's question. any. Or maybe if, write it on a whiteboard and hold it I up. Know. 
If there's any one thing that you hope that we get out of this interview that our listeners get, what would that one thing be? The one thing would be listen to people. Mm -hmm. Whether it's another agent, getting to know them, listen to your clients. And I don't mean hear them. I mean, listen to them and understand their message.